Mm-hmm. Couple new numbers on the line for you guys. Um, what was that like having them out there? Was there a different feel, a little more energy? What was that like having those two out there with you guys? I mean, they had a rotation going on the right side, uh, getting a feel for them, everybody getting reps, and having Hofield back at center was very good. Having Chad on the field was very good. It helped the offense out a lot. And then Derek Kelly and Brock Gruber coming in the game, helping out was a big factor. So it's everybody stepping up when their name's called, making plays. How have you seen this line progressing throughout this season? Slowly but surely, yeah. We're making less mistakes. We're picking up passes. We're trying to run the ball even more, more. Communication might cause and stuff like that. But every week, we're getting better. I was going to ask about that, the communication with Hofeld coming into the game against Wake Forest. How did you see that, that part of the game? I mean, he did. He made the right calls. You know, he's been here for a while. He got a lot of experience under his belt, so he knows exactly how to raise the defense and tell us young bucks what to do and how to do it. So it's having good having him on the line. What do you guys need to do just to have a complete four-quarter game? I mean, you, offense is completely progressing from game to game, but what's the next step for you guys? Uh, keep progressing, of course. Always room for improvement, but still going back on the film, seeing what we did wrong, correcting those uh, MAs, drop balls, miss assignments on the run game. Everything that we do on the on the game field needs to be corrected, everything. What's the biggest change you've seen in Everett from the first game to now? Uh, he's, he's been, uh, everything's better. He's put really pushing us to go faster. He's making all his calls, all his reads and stuff like that. I see his, his tempo game has really been picking up in his reads. I see he, he does be reading the defense apart and stuff like that. So he's going to get better every week. Being, Rob, sorry, you can go ahead. Rod, last season you kind of got thrown in the fire against the Canes in your first real big action. What do you remember about that week and about that game? Uh, well, I, I don't even remember throwing in the fire. I know it just happened all so fast. I, I, I remember last year I was taking reps with the ones, but that week I was taking all the reps with the ones, and then he told me I was starting. And then I look now, like, it's been a year already, so let's let's just get this win against a good Miami defense and a Hopefully, you can have a good time there. Last year was a classic. It was a come from behind win. What do you remember about that game? What do you remember about that atmosphere? I remember that it was it, the atmosphere was phenomenal. I mean, the stance was rocking everybody. But I remember we did come from behind, and I remember we just couldn't quit. We hit adversity, and we just had to head, have a head down and head and head for the head for the goal line. Someone from you know, kind of up north, Midwest kind of area. Did you ever know? Like, did you ever get into the FSU Miami rivalry? That well, wasn't really big back then. It wasn't really big to me back then. But now, being here, I know it's it's crazy. We got like the hurricane flags up there waving, so I know it's a real, real big factor around here. Last year, did they have to kind of tell you about it? Kind of fill you in about the rivalry? Yeah, I mean, I, I really didn't pay attention to the flags, but now they pointed it out to it. My coach, my high school coach, actually told me was the first one to tell me to watch out for the hurricane flags. And he's he's a real big. Uh, Seminoles fans, so it's, it's real big around here.